All right, we're going to get started. Um, hello to anybody watching. Hello to anybody watching after the fact. Um, it's David at Bearski here today. I'm joined again by Brandon. Is it Duplassi? Duplacy. Duplacy. Dupl um, again, from uh, Four Star Chicago Sports. Um, I think at this point we've talked about it. Brandon's probably going to you know, try to be a weekly guest if he can, if he has the time, and uh, join us every week just to talk about some fantasy football. A quick little Tuesday episode every week whenever we can. Uh, we'll be playing our fantasy sports anyway. We may as well talk about them. So, uh, Brandon, how's it going, man? Any updates from your end? Well, I'm drafted in two weeks on yesterday on Labor Day. But besides that, man, not too much. How about you? How you doing, Dave? Good as well, man. Um, I think that was kind of where I, you know, I had mentioned to you that uh, kind of where I wanted to start because uh, we were, you know, with you, me and Dustin, were talking about kind of like our the people we had and the people we liked and all that stuff. And um, we finally get to practice what we preach and see how much we followed our own advice and just kind of wanted to start with uh, talking about, you know, how our fantasy drafts went, how did they go, anything that you want to care to comment on or anybody you got that you were kind of, oh, well, this is the one I was talking about. This kind of worked out. Anything you, anything of, of note that you had to mention? Well, I just want to say this, man. Is it just me or is the day after drafts, like when your draft, last draft is over, it's like the day after Christmas. You know what I mean? Like I love fantasy football, man, but I live and breathe for drafts. Dude. Once the drafts are over, it's like I'm, I enjoy winning money if I'm, you know, I mean, if I'm in a money league, but it's like the draft is the thing to me in fantasy I enjoy most. It always breaks my heart when it's passed. <laughs> It's uh, it is it is literally like Christmas because you're hyped up for like th two to three weeks, yeah. and that thirty seconds of ripping the paper off is all of it, and then it's just like I almost enjoy the paper ripping more than anything. Yeah, else. for sure, man. And I, I pride myself like I'm always one of the guys who takes makes the least amount of moves in the fantasy league, so I pride myself in the way I draft. So once that's passed, man, I'm like. I guess it's kind of pride. I'm like I can't show off anymore. Draft spine. <laughs> I'm kind of the same, but I I'm almost. I almost do it out of laziness and uh, and not to not to sound like an, a, a douche again or an arrogant person, but like I usually never end up anywhere near the top of the waiver wire week to week. Yeah. And so I, I'm, yeah. I, if, if I'm in 10 to 12 men, I'm always like eight or nine and anybody worth taking. I'll well, always wait till too. Thursday or Friday and then I'll just kind of pick up my replacement if somebody's hurt or something like that. You do rolling? Rolling as in? Like the team who made the last waiver ad goes to the bottom of the list. You guys just do by record. Whoever we do, places bottom. we do record and then points that week, basically. Oh, see, I don't like. So, like, I did record once, man. I like. It felt like the person who was who drafted well was being punished the whole year. So I do yeah. a rolling now, where the last guy who made a waiver drops to the bottom of the list. So the one time I did it, and Pauly, um, this is why he quit being GM because people got pissed at him. And I, it was my favorite thing is that he gave a set amount of roster moves per year. Yeah, I want to say it was like to. ten or something like that. I, used I, to, I got that. I got egregiously bitched up from a lot of people, so I finally folded, man. But I used to I used to give five ads a week. I don't know what it totals to, but oh, I think Pauly gave us two ads per week. It was it was yeah. amazing. I loved I it because people I couldn't just the, drop and add and all that stuff. I think the. The way the like Yahoo could just set up a standard league. I think it's five ads per week, and for years I had never changed it. And then I finally eliminated the ads, or maybe it's yeah. Three. I don't know. Sorry, man, Ram. What's going on? No, no, no. I, I, I think that's kind of where I wanted to be at. And I think whenever you have like that rambling conversation, that means it's a natural flowing one, and it's always the most fun. Foster, thanks for watching, dude. Um, love thanks, every guys. time I see you. And uh, yeah, if you're if you're into fantasy football, Foster, please feel free to let us know, and I would love to have you on one of these times. Well, um, we got people in the chat, man. I hope these guys, if you guys are throwing in, who do I start? Who do I mean? Week one, I'm gonna give you guys advice a little bit later, but who do I start? Who do I bench? Me and David are happy to oblige with that. Absolutely. Just to kind of comment further on um, a little bit. So I have like I have my two leagues. I have my like big money league, and then I have my casual work league, which is a little bit more fun. Um, a little bit more goofy and, you know, coworkers are not necessarily the most fantasy football experts. And then my big money league, everyone's working pretty hard keepers and all that stuff. Um, fun, a few funny notes, like kind of that's, and so feel free to hop on these as well. Um, I got Brock Purdy. I practiced what I preached on that. I got him in like the 10th round. Amazing, right? Just super solid starter. Um, I grabbed Bijan with the second overall pick. Thank How many God. teams in the league? This one's 10. Okay. So I got Bijan, wanted him. I have DK in both leagues. I love I love Metcalf this year. 
Oh, me too, man. We were talking about that, about how randomly love them this year. And uh, I got him in both leagues and I'm, I'm going to ride or die on that. Um, I took uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. in both leagues in about the fourth. That's a fail safe. Yeah. And then um, uh, I'm rocking Kaimi Fairbairn as my kicker in both leagues because I got him for free. And I'm just like, the Texans are going to, even if they don't punch it in, they're going to have a field goal almost like every drive at this point, I feel like. I took, I took kickers out of both of my leagues. That's, I, that's cool. I just like it was people thought they had some sort of formula behind how to dictate a good kicker, but it was besides just the guy who makes more field goals than misses, there is no science to a man who like, oh, he's on this team, so he should be getting yeah. a lot of field. Like it never plays out that way to me. So to me, it yeah. felt like it was just luck of the draw, and every week a guy was good or every week a guy was so I like, man, I'm just done with that. I don't want people thinking about that. So also every kicker can kick a 60 yarder at this point. Almost, yeah. I feel like in the league. So it's just a situation where you got lucky and your kicker kicked a sixty yarder, and now you won the you won that week over a kicker. It's kind of it's kind of funny sometimes, but it also pisses a lot of people off. Um, one more thing, commentary wise, on my big money league, and this is the funny thing where you know football heads were kind of agreeing with us. I ignored Anthony Richardson eighth round. I was the so I had the twelfth pick in my big money league, and. Uh, and yeah, I ignored Anthony Richardson in the eighth round, twelfth overall pick. Well, yeah, here, and here's what's crazy, man. I so I did two drafts. I ran both leagues. One of them is a league I've been doing for twelve years. It's a pretty big money league as well. Very serious draft. Twelve guys all know their football. Um, the waiver because I have a lot of roster spots too. I built a tremendous like I think I have six bench players, two IR, two flexes, three wide receivers, two running backs, and of course, so like a lot of so. The free agency is just flat, man. I mean, nothing. Yeah. Like once you're picking your last, after your yeah, my I had 17 rounds in my big money, so yeah. So you're getting yeah. thin, but you took Purdy in the 10 man league in the 10th. I took him in the eighth in the 12 man league. So pretty, pretty much the same. You know what I mean in regards to how many quarterbacks mm -hmm. are left based on the amount of players in the league. Pretty right. similar, like yeah. And I, I uh, did a two quarterback league was the other one, man. And I just kind of did it for the fun of it. I think we're only putting like 10 or 20 bucks in, but it's a winner take all. But um, eight guys, so the waivers are stacked. You know what I mean? They're still starting running backs in the waivers or in the free agency. But uh, I took Caleb Williams 22nd. So I think I got a draft grade like a D minus because they're like, nice. who the hell does that? But I was like, I'm having fun with this, man. I'm going to take those risks I was talking about and see if this guy, I just want to have Caleb Williams on a team. See if yeah. this guy, uh, who knows, man, if he ends up being who I hope he is. My Agreed. And then last commentary, just for fun, because this is my keeper league. I took a big fly. I took a last, uh, second to last round. I took Zach Charbonnet, because just I, as much as I do like Kenneth Walker, I feel like with Seattle, I, I, I even expected him to kind of explode last year, and he never did. And uh, he was solid, but he just never exploded. So this year, I'm just kind of like, you know what? I could see some sort of weird, funky Seattle situation where I get to keep Zach Charbonnet second to last round. And uh, I got Josh Palmer with Mr. Irrelevant pick. I thought that was pretty good. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I'm not a big – his health concerns me, man, but a phenomenal pick, Mr. Irrelevant. Um, yeah, I, I think I was the second-to-last pick or third-to-last pick in my, my big league, and I took – you're talking about, like, I think 18th round now or something like that. I, I took uh, Roman Wilson. Nice. Because he's the slot receiver on the Steelers. I was like, I think Russell will be more comfortable throwing inside the numbers than out, but – I found I heard a hilarious anecdote today uh, that a year ago George Pickens and I'm not a huge George Pickens guy. I think he's really good. Um, yeah, I'm exactly. just kind of like he's I'm glad he's guy. not on my team in terms of like team chemistry and like real football. Yeah. Um, that uh, it was against the Jets like a year or two ago. Um, that George Pickens, you know, usually players show up to game time like four hours before they start warming up, catching balls, jugs machine, this and that, running routes. Dude showed up with like candy. 10 minutes before kickoff, full pads. It was just like, my bad, traffic. <laughs> just, oh, yeah, dude, I think I heard that, yeah. I believe it was a I funny anecdote. Jersey traffic. Jerry from Barstool said that anecdote today. I love Jersey Jerry. but uh, yeah. yeah, I have um, pickings in a league, but I took them really late. It's that league with eight guys. Yeah, let's see some comments. I love any comments because it just means somebody's 
uh, interested enough to listen to us, and I love that. I appreciate that. Uh, SJMP, um, love to answer yours. If I was to package up Rashad White and Devontae Adams, I'm guessing, in a trade package for someone, who should I aim for? I've been seeing that Adams is on a decline, so I'm not sure if I should trade him before it's late. Really, it matters. The thing that depends on uh, whether or not you should trade him um, is when you got him for Devontae Adams, because I assume he was your third round pick, probably. Um, and Rashad White sounds like a similar time you would draft, right? Third or fourth rounders. So if you're packaging two third rounders, you should probably be getting like a second round draft talent, which would be a top, like, I would say like the sixth to seventh best running back, um, possibly like the third or fourth best receiver. And then you'd better be breaking even if you're getting a top flight talent with that. So let's say you're getting, I'm just going to throw a name out there, like Saquon Barkley, right? You get Saquon for both of those. You're upgrading in your running back position, theoretically, ideally. Um, but uh, Devontae is like top tier as a receiver. You just assume that he's not going to get production because who's throwing him the ball? And I think the Raiders are going to suck this year as well. So all depends. And then looking at your current lineup, Purdy, Brees Hall, Travis Etienne, Rashad White, uh, Devontae Adams, Brandon Ayuk, Jake Moody. You could definitely use an upgrade at uh, wide receiver. Keon Coleman is risky. Terry McLaurin should probably be starting over Devontae Adams just in terms of like target share anyway. Uh, Bucky Irving, Hollywood Brown, Dontavian Wicks, and Justice Hall. I almost like your bench receivers better than Devontae Adams. So if you're really trying to upgrade and you're sacrificing Rashad White, get a crappier running back because you're you're deep there. And well, I guess I don't know about deep, but uh, I would say you definitely need to – because Rashad White's a really great third running back. Yeah, you better I, have a, I was going to say, man, I love Rashad White this year. Me too. I, me too. Tampa's just great. Um, I don't know. Care to comment on that? Because I think you are you almost don't want to get rid of that third running back. You're one injury away from from needing can him I, as your RB2. His, can I see his starting lineup? Again? Yeah, yeah. Uh, starting lineup here is uh, – gotcha. Uh, is it showing up? Yeah. Lineup is Brock Purdy, Brees Hall, Travis Etienne, Rash Rashad White, Devonte Adams, Brandon Ayuk, and Jake Moody. You I could still, take Devonte Adams out of there and put in Terry McLaurin. I don't think you're losing much at all. Yeah, and I don't know how many people are in this league, but you got, you got a pretty good team. And I don't, I don't necessarily like, Devonte Adams. The last two years, I would not have touched. <laughs> this is the one year that if I had him on my team, I would feel a little better. I agree with David. I think the Raiders are a terrible football team. But I do think that Gardner Minshew, I mean, he, the guy slings the ball. Michael Pittman had 109 receptions last year after the injury to Anthony Richardson. And Richardson really didn't throw him too many passes. So, I mean, like, the receivers that have played with Minshew show a, a positive impact. Like, I think that Devontae Adams, if anyone on that passing game, Brock Bowers and Devontae Adams are the two guys that I – wouldn't have hated drafting from that team this year. I I mean, unless you feel desperate to get Devontae Adams off your team, obviously he's on the decline. He's in his latter years, but I, I like him more this year than I have in the last three seasons. Uh, I agree completely. Um, honestly, at this point, I would say uh, unless somebody's approaching you with like a deal that you can't say no to, um, I would, I would, Right, I would ride this out for a week or two and see what happens. Hope for the best. Absolutely. I agree with you, David. Those are not two players I'd be too worried about on my team. Okay. What's going on? Looks Rich? like David's loading. Hey, Brandon. Yeah, David, looks, how you doing? looks like we might have lost David for a minute there, so um, we'll let him get back in. But, yeah, uh, Richie, I just wanted to welcome you on the show. Thanks for joining tonight. And here we go. I think David is back, so here, let me cool. bring him back. <clears throat> What's up, David? We see you again. I think I don't know if he's maybe possibly broke. Yeah. Okay. We'll give him a minute. Um, sure. To figure things out. How you doing, man? Uh, so yeah, they were just these guys were discussing uh their drafts, and uh yeah, do you, do you have a fantasy football draft you were in? Oh, sorry. Should be all right now. Sorry. So yeah, Richie. Um, yeah. To wrap up with SJMP, just I think overall, if, I, if you guys can hear me better. Um, yeah. Unless unless somebody's breaking down your door to give you a a, a grand a Godfather offer, um, ride out two weeks 
and see what happens with your team because you have a super solid roster. Yeah. So I'm going to say, let me, sorry, David, I don't want to put you, but I'm going to get to, because I'm going to forget it. I said, I'm going to get to it later, but I'm going to say this guys. Well, first off, before a season starts, I don't like seeking trades. If trades are Same. offered to me, I would obviously explore it, but I don't like seeking trades. You drafted those guys for a reason, probably not, but in the, within the last week and you're already kind of in your own head. So I say this to everybody, be confident in who you drafted because there's a reason you did when you drafted them. Unless you see a dire position of need, like I don't have a tight end, you know what I mean? Like you took a tight end late, it's like fire move and you need a better starter. But another thing is, guys, don't bench players before week one. I see a lot of guys draft their starting, you know, they fill their starting slots, then they draft a bench. And before week one, I see them plugging in bench. It's like, don't draft the guys you – or bench the guys you drafted in high rounds for somebody because you think you – you're smarter than the end. Like, oh, this defense is good against this. But just play the guys that you drafted high, man. Yeah. One people. of the comments he got added in there, too, was uh, he has Kittle as a starting tight end. I don't know how many people are in your league, man, but, like – You got a good you, team. You, yeah, you really don't need to do much here, buddy. Like, you, I think just looking at based on who you drafted where, probably, you might have had one of the, my favorite drafts I've, I've seen this year. Yeah, Kittle's like, been going late this year. Yeah. And he's been going like tight end five this year, and then I mean, people think got, he has injury issues. And he's got number yeah. one receivers on the bench, and I love how <laughs> when Hollywood Brown does play because I think he's doubtful for this week. When he does play on that Chiefs team, he's going to be a very productive receiver as well. Hey, yeah, twelve man, that dude. Roster, twelve man. That's really good. Holy man! Yeah, w look out for um, running back injuries because everybody has to all the time. It doesn't seem like you're super deep at running back. Yeah, so at this point, player player wide receivers, let them go. I mean, you're starting Devontae Adams, Brandon Ayuk in week one. You're probably pretty yeah, pretty well off. If you want to trade Devontae, leave Rashad White out of that trade and offer Devontae Adams for a running back strictly right. to swap and, and stick with McLaurin possibly in your starting lineup if you get a running back in return for Devontae Adams. Yeah, McLaurin might end up having a better year anyway, so you're probably pretty pretty well off here. Um Reggie, we were just kind of shooting the shooting the breeze about you know what kind of interesting draft stories. Anybody who uh, you know, I don't know if you watched our last show. We we're just kind of doing a I don't get it kind of uh, scenario where we didn't really understand the Anthony Richardson hype, and we were kind of just sticking to our guns about that. Any interesting stories from your fantasy drafts this weekend? I helped a buddy with an eight man draft yesterday, and he ended up getting he was at number seven, and Brees Hall and B. John Robinson were still on the board for him, and he ended up being able to get both. And then on the way back, I got him uh, Travis Etienne. All right. <laughs> like, I was so over the moon for him, but it was only an eight man draft. Like, the, the roster I just mentioned, it, it, this gentleman, SJMP, he's got Etienne and Rashad White and Brees Hall. That's, that's that's a good trio of running backs. Like they can they can carry your team any given week, you know. Yeah, I like yeah, that Buccaneers sure. offense this year. It's a high volume offense. They're going to move the ball. So Rashad White's a good, and he can catch too. Good. Don't, don't I wouldn't move Rashad White if I if I drafted Agreed. him. I'd have drafted him to stay on my team. Last year he was the he was like the steal of the draft probably because you were getting yeah, him in like Ky ninth Kyron round. Williams, and... Kyron Williams and Rashad White carried people's teams across the finish line last year. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, this is a fun one. We get to comment on T-Bag. <laughs> Caleb, CMC, James Connor, Nico Collins, Rashi Rice, Chris Olave, McBride, Jordan Addison, Keon Coleman, Zach Moss, Josh Palmer, Zamir White, Jordan Mason. Need a quarterback. Or Twelve please. man. That's, need, a back, that's, need a backup quarterback. Always have a yeah. yeah. I mean, um, the the one thing I will say is it's a lot of upside roster kind of thing. I don't. Yeah, I'd be I worried about your week to week consistency. Your your CMC is like your best consistent guy, and even then, the guy goes down for three weeks with a calf injury every year. Um. Just so between Connor and the calf, you got two some injury issues for sure there. Yeah, I like Caleb Samir White and Zach Moss though. Uh, Zach Moss a little less because I think Chase Brown has a monster year if he stays healthy. He's right, healthy. and then Jordan Addison is your stash away guy, I suppose. Um, but even then, it's Sam Darnold throwing to him. Hopefully, he can find him. Keon Coleman. Keon Coleman might be my favorite like risk factor here. I think Rashi Rice is highly underrated this off season. I mean, the the traffic accident situation he's in is is definitely bad, but. The NFL is not doing anything about it. The Chiefs aren't doing anything about it. He's just going to probably be yeah, playing. He's going to ride it out. I love the, I love your tight end, T-Bag. 
<laughs> you love tea then, bags, tight end. I love it too. <laughs> I don't well, know if this is what he was going for, but uh, Nico Collins or she Rice, Chris Olave, all of them can get better this year. All of them can turn in better stats this year than last year, and they turned in pretty good stats last year. So um, that's a young wide receiver and Jordan Addison. They can all like you picked a lot of upside there. Like hey, this is Palmer. kind of what I would expect for a twelve man. Josh Palmer's a quality player if he's healthy. Yeah, I'd, I'd almost like you have an embarrassment of of mid riches to the point where I'm I'd be so stressed starting this team right here if it was me because Caleb CMC James Conner your auto starts Nico Collins like is a week to week depending on who CJ Stroud's targets that week Rashi Rice is your auto start Chris Olave is just on the Saints um, and <laughs> Trey McBride's a great great tight end Trey McBride's great and then Keon I would almost be like tempted to start Keon Coleman every week and like Zamir and uh, Zach Moss right now because of just what the Bengals are doing. And I don't, I think the Bengals are going to be a very interesting team to watch in the first like three to four weeks. I don't know how well he plays. It's yet to be seen very small sample size, but I, I love Zamir, Zamar White's usage this year. Yeah. I think he's one of the most, I, I think he's going to have one of the higher counts and carries for sure. Yeah. I think both teams are going to be running, like running the ball a lot. I think Cincinnati's trying to pretend that, that uh, Joe Burrow's okay, but I think they're going to be running the ball a lot. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. But uh, overall, I think where we wanted to go with the show, um, and I don't know how prepared you are, Brandon, with your top fives and stuff, but we had our top five sit em, start em's and stuff like that. I didn't get anything specific when we chatted about positions or anything like that. I broke mine down by position kind of because it's like quarterback, running back, wide receiver, <laughs> tight end a little bit. Um but yeah, I think we can start with kind of our stardom sitems. We can comment on each other's as well. If you have anything to throw in before we go, and uh, yeah, I think we can get get going on that. How do you feel? How do you feel? Yeah, definitely. Man. Sounds good. Um, so I'm gonna start with mine. Uh, my auto stardom, and I don't have them, but I'm watching. I think I'm either played against them. Um, so auto pick four QBs. Yeah, that's gonna be an easy. That's gonna be slim. It's going to be like such easy uh, shooting fish in a barrel for you, T-Bag. So that's going to be good for you. Um, he's going to drop one. You're going to be the benefactor of getting a free quarterback for sure. So um, I have, as my auto start, love the matchup, love the love the team, love the situation. I think if you have Jared Goff in any leagues, start him this week. He's playing, if I'm not mistaken, the L.A. Rams. Um, I think the LA Rams are going to be the worst, if not one of the five worst defenses in all of football this year. Um, it's a Sunday nighter, big game. Uh, the Lions lately have been performing really well on primetime games. Um, Jared Goff right now, I think generally speaking, is probably the most consistent part of that team uh, in terms of offense. So I just see Jared Goff. I don't. He doesn't strike me as the type, and in terms of their offense, the fact that Ben Johnson stuck around, they are one of the few teams in the NFL this year that I'm kind of leaning towards I don't think they're going to be off to a hot start. Every team gets a messy start right after training camp and they get off to slower starts. But in terms of the Lions, I don't see much change on that team. I don't see much miscommunication or any reason they should have a slow start. I would easily expect Jared Goff to go off for like 250 plus two touchdowns, if not three, um, probably have one pick at worst. So I would say your easy auto start for quarterback, um, considering all the crazy matchups this week, I would say Jared Goff. How do you guys think? Yeah, I like Goff as well, for sure. Um, you're, I think you're absolutely right. That Rams, I, The Rams got better in the draft with Jared Verse and Braden Fisk, but that doesn't help the secondary that wasn't very good last year. They didn't do too much to change that. I'm going to take the easy one, guys. My auto start for quarterback is Joe Burrow this week. Um, he's back. Seems like his health is good. He's playing that Patriots team that I, I think might be one of the worst teams in the NFL on both sides of the football. I have them as the worst record in the NFL when the season's done, and it's going to start early. And uh, it's going to be a great game for Joe Burrow to to kind of find his feet again. I would say probably at least two passing touchdowns, probably close to 300 yards. Interesting. I would say the only thing on that one, um, and just this is my skepticism on Joe Burrow this year, Um I just don't like Joe Burrow's situation. And then the secondary in New England is probably the only good part of their defense left at this point. Yeah, but didn't they? I think I thought they didn't they lose somebody in the offseason? I thought they lost a quality player that 
They, I think they got rid of Jack Johnson or one of those guys to the Chargers, but he was one of those guys who was kind of causing trouble on the team, and then they got rid of him, and then kind of brought brought him back. But they lost. They brought back Christian Gonzalez, who was like a top five corner through five yeah, weeks. Yeah, he, he, so that'll be fun. Him. They drafted him fifteenth overall last year. Yeah, yeah that'll be yeah, fun. Quality player. I still agree with you. I think Joe Burrow will have a good game. I my hesitation in the only way, shape, and form is. And this is all speculative and just my feelings towards Cincinnati. I've never liked Cincinnati too much. Um, they always get off to slower starts and then kind of end up a nine or ten win team and then sneak into the playoffs. And then they play really well in the playoffs when it matters. And then I just don't – I think they're going to run the shit out of the ball the first few weeks until they can figure out what Joe Burrow's wrist is <laughs> and how much he can, like, handle, like, the typical 30 to the – four. because Joe Burrow in any other year is, like, one of the few quarterbacks, I would say, like, 40 to 45 throws every game. Right, like he's one of those yeah. high well, volume, game, high number game, guys. The run game has definitely improved. I think between Chase Brown and Zach Moss, they got a little. I don't know. I just I wouldn't say, well younger with Chase Brown, but a little just a little more speed as well. Um, Joe Mixon was good, but he didn't run the ball very well. He was a great player on the backfield, like Eckler has been his whole career. But you don't think of those guys as pure running backs. No, I, I think Joe Mixon. I think the peak of Joe Mixon's career is definitely on the downhill. Yeah, absolutely. After the, he's on, he's on the older side. Some trouble last year that didn't make it any better either. Right. So yeah, Richie, any comments on either of our starts? Any any thoughts? Um, I like the Joe Burrow pick. Um, I was just gonna comment with my own. Uh, yeah. If that's cool. So yeah, I would say CJ sure. Stroud, Indianapolis. It's not like they have a super stellar defense, yeah. and I think that's an easy pick. If we're go, if we're allowing people to go with easy picks here, just because. No, that I was my second gonna... pick as well. So yeah. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, mine as well. <laughs> CJ, I almost said Stroud just because that again that Colts secondary I think finished thirty first in the league last year. Not yeah, they didn't really. Divorce Buckner's like thirty one. Grover Stewart is one of the biggest overpays in the off season. They have no defense events to speak of, and then the secondary I can't name you. Two corner. I think their best cornerback is their nickel, and it's Kyrie something. He's the best guy on the team. So I agree. Uh, CJ Stroud was definitely my second place choice on that list before I figured out. I was like, you know what? Jared Goff, Ben Johnson, they're not going to skip a beat. Uh, Detroit's probably the most stable early season team in the NFL right now. I just don't like their fantasy options because there's just too many mouths to feed, and I just wouldn't feel good about unless I get to just take the points from Detroit for scoring. I, I have no idea who's going to be the, the big player of the week other than Jared Goff because he's going to feed all those guys. I like Amon Ra. Um, I think Laporta is going to have a few more down weeks than people where he's being drafted, especially in fantasy. I saw people taking him over Kelsey. Same. I'm not there yet. Like you said, man, they spread the ball. They did lose Reynolds, but I think this is the year you're going to see Jameer Gibbs really involved in the passing game in, the, in Detroit. So – there's going to be a lot of targets in the backfield. And Montgomery can catch the ball. He doesn't do much with it after, but he can catch the ball. Agreed. Um, I just want to do one more comment before we go to our, our stinkers. We got Kamara, Connor, Ramondre, Javante, Chase Brown, and Warren. How the hell did you get all these running backs? I need. I would settle for two of them. It's great. 10-team um, PPR, how bad is it? Dude, you're in a great spot. You have depth and you have uh, – Receivers. You're – you're loaded with receivers. Kamara's Kamara. really good for people. Kamara, Connor, and Chase Brown can all catch – and Warren can catch the ball. And I personally think that just based on how Bonix plays football, I think yeah, you're going to see gonna so run much yeah. running the shit out of the ball, and then Bo Nix is going to be just like a one-read check-down quarterback all year. Like, Javante is probably going to have like four to six catches a game. Yeah, he got a cold piece stays healthy. He suffered a pretty – Pretty rough injury. Jalen Warren's a great stash till the end of the year because I just I like Najee Harris. I don't hate him for any reason in particular, but I just think he's going to get benched by week six, and TJ Warren's just going to play over him. I, I do <laughs> think Chase Brown guys is an immediate impact player. I think he's kind of a Devon A chain, same role, very small player. You have to worry about his health, but he's a Swiss Army knife. Give the guy a ball in whatever fashion you can, and just give him some open field. Yeah, man, depending on what your uh, flex positions are, because in my big league, I have two flexes, and I'm starting four receivers this week just because I'm so thin at running back. Dude, if you have two flexes on your running back, you better be starting four running backs because these are all great choices. Kamara's great. I'd start Connor. I'd probably start Javante, and then, I don't know, I Chase Brown. Flex and Chase Brown. Yeah. It's a I'm a in every draft, he went higher than I expected. I didn't get him. I, I watched him all at, his whole career at Illinois. 
until you so. yeah football. until you figure out until you figure out what the Patriots are, Ramondre might be a bench. But other than that, dude, you're you're all set for the year. Yeah, I see a lot of defenses loading the box. It's going to be an uphill battle for that guy for sure. Agreed. Um, I I can start with my my avoid them, and it's not so much. I just I'm very aware. I'm also big into gambling. I don't know about you guys. How much do you guys log into your FanDuel and everything like that? Yeah, um. Yeah. Week one of the NFL, slam every under. Anything near 45 to 50 point point totals, slam unders. It's just sloppy football. It's just people forget. They get excited about the beginning of the season. They think that the Chiefs and the Ravens is going to be like 35 to 28. That happens occasionally, but very rarely. Um, and then you're going to see 15 to 18 point slugfests and rock fights. So slam unders. And the main thing I would say with my bench them or avoid them um, – I'm usually going to throw in some shit talk here and there and just some NFC hatred. Uh, do not start Jordan Love this week. Bench Jordan Love. I can easily say Jalen Hurts just as quickly, um, but avoid that Friday night in Brazil game. Um, I think there's too much weird stuff going on, period, with that Brazil game. Um, the vibes are just wrong about it, generally speaking, in terms of all the stories you hear about the players not allowing to bring their families and how they're just supposed to stay in their hotel rooms. They're not allowed to wear green. You can't even check the score on Twitter because Brazil just checked, uh, banned Twitter. So you're going to have to watch that game live. If you want to know what the hell's going on, um, you can't see highlights from Brazil. So um, I think it's going to be a slow start. I think all the players are going to be like just oddly jet lagged, oddly tired, things like that nature. Um, also, I think I, I me personally, Yes, the last nine games of the Packers season were a nice positive, um, but to I don't understand the Jordan Love crowning yet. Um, I would just as easily – I don't personally find it shocking to hear Jordan Love lost to the Eagles with 175 total yards, one pick, one touchdown, two picks. That wouldn't shock me in any way, shape, or form, whereas if Jalen Hurts didn't at least go for like, I don't know, 150 throwing a touchdown and then a rushing touchdown, I think that's the much more consistent choice of those two. Um, but everything in that Brazil game is just stay away. If you can start a better option somewhere at home against the bad defense, this is two teams that are both pretty damn good, pretty NFC favorites. It's going to be a rock fight, and I don't think anybody's going to be a winner here. Yeah, I agree with you. And I I would have said, I mean, that game is ugly. I, I, those, I love the two players that Philly drafted in their secondary, but they're still very young, Cooper DeGene and uh, – Quinion Mitchell, great players, mm -hmm. young. I don't know if they don't get beat a little early in the season, but I, I agree with you in the game, the game being in Brazil on Friday. As far as I heard on the radio this morning too, guys, none of these players like being in Brazil. They don't want to leave their hotel. There's a lot of crime going on there, so they're not they're not thrilled to be there is what I've, what I've been told. Um, I, I would tell you guys to sit Daniel Jones, but he's probably not on your fantasy team. I hope to God he's <laughs> not. Um, a guy that we all see draft a little higher than I think he should be. Um, but like me and David said, we both watch him just fall and fall and fall and fall in our drafts. Anthony Richardson, you draft Anthony Richardson, but you got a quality backup. He's playing a Texans defense that has Will Anderson and um, now Daniel Dan Hunter. Hunter on the other side. He's going to get pressure no matter who that off who the offensive line is that the Texans are facing. They're going to be a handful. I don't like Richardson throwing the ball a lot. I do see him having a decent rushing game, maybe even over 100 yards, possibly a touchdown. But I'm going to guess that he probably turns the ball over at least twice, maybe a fumble and an interception. He's going to be pressured. The Colts' offensive line, the Colts' off, interior offensive line is phenomenal. I have questions with their tackles. So, yeah, Anthony Richardson's the guy I don't love starting. You probably feel, though, that you're in a must-start position because you drafted him high. But me and David – Weren't real high on him to begin with. If you have a quality backup, that's the guy. I'm with you, man. Uh, I think Texans are a top five defense this year. They're probably one of my favorite defense. I think they're top three, honestly. Yeah, I, I in fantasy. yeah, dude, the preseason, their secondary was so physical and so scrappy. And then I think D'Amico Ryans can coach up any mid-level linebacker to probably be like an upper-level borderline pro bowler. So even though they didn't upgrade dramatically a linebacker, I still think like, they're probably going to be pretty good there. And then the defensive line at this point is going to take care of itself because of those two guys like that you just well, mentioned. So right. I'm with you. Yeah, I agree. The hell of a defensive coach. Man. That's why I was going to say Daniel Jones because Brian Flores is going to eat up eat Daniel Jones up. But I hope 
Nobody out there drafted Daniel Jones on the fence. The way I the way I approached it, Brandon, was I looked at the twelve to fifteen best quarterbacks in the league because in my head I figured that's who you're going to be drafting anyway or debating on starting, and then tried to avoid a, a must start kind of guy. So even though I like obviously Jordan Love is probably the fifth or sixth best fantasy quarterback, maybe you know like seventh or eighth, whatever you, people you know slot him at. Um, I was just you know in my head I just would not be surprised by. 175 a pick and t- uh, a touchdown and two picks from Jordan Love against the Eagles and they match up really well the secondary like you just said had some new extra pieces like the whole point of the Packers yeah, is that they, they just throw so much depth at you that you just can't keep up and right now the Eagles have so much depth at corner and safety that they reloaded on that I just think it's like almost that even slugfest rock fight and I always almost picture this Brazil game like um you guys remember that rainy Miami Pittsburgh game where the ball just like slopped into the into the ground and every all the yeah. players were just like trying to go home. I think that's what you're going to see. It's just like low effort. All the players just want to get this game over with and go home yeah. regardless whether that's they win true. or not. These are veteran teams that know that you the season's not won in game 1. It'd be nice to win, but I think they're both just kind of like the veterans especially are just going to be like let me get the fuck out of here. So Richie, any uh, comments or any additional throw-ins you got in there? Avoidums? Um, my avoidum would have just been Dak Prescott. He's against a Cleveland defense that still has a Darius Smith and Miles Garrett and a good secondary. And um, he, he started off last season really slow too. Uh, the Cowboys' offense didn't really get cooking until Week Seven. And Mike McCarthy's offense—it's like he gets a new team and then he's good for a number of years, and it it only gets worse. They figure out his plan. Um, so. I, I don't think Dak Prescott um, is a stardom this week. So, yeah, that's just me. I'm, generally, I'm, I'm with you. The only thing I would say is, as of right now, you got Dalvin Cook and Ezekiel Elliott. So if that team is down early, Dak Prescott's probably going to drop back 40 to 50 times. So even though it might like not look like a good game and they might get you know their asses kicked um, physically, even if it's not on the scoreboard, I think just target share, I think you're going to see Dak Prescott sling it i don't even know who the hell their second receiver is at this point so i'm with you in terms of the talent and not really looking positive for dak prescott but well, more Brandon so than Rose, Rose, i think they have like the i think they have cd lamb at two touchdowns so really i believe so in player parlays right now i think it's like oh brandon like, cooks that's the uh other receiver uh, right now down there and he's pretty so, good, but he's just kind of like he disappears he's, and then reappears every once in a while. He's from the preseason. He missed a few. He missed like a week of practice in the preseason. Something happened. I always yeah. find this thought experiment very interesting and funny. But like, uh, there's always players in the NBA and the NFL that you just feel like have been around for decades. And like, if I ask you guys, just throw out your best guess, like how old Brandon Cooks is. <laughs> Well, I was looking him up for fantasy football research, so I know he was drafted so you know, in 2013. Bra- yeah. Brandon. Any idea? Thirteen. So he's dude. Like I think he's like twenty-seven years old. Oh, really? No, I think I'm pretty sure he's like twenty-seven years old or he something. Something right? ridiculous. Brandon Cooks no feels way. like he's just been around forever. I want to say something ridiculous like that. It's like twenty-eight or twenty-seven, maybe. He's thirty. Is he thirty? Thank God. Okay. Twenty yeah. well, thirteen. <laughs> he's got to be at least like twenty-nine, right? I was gonna say because I I feel like Brandon Cooks has been just in my life forever <laughs> for a long time. Yeah, and I'm so. always like, he's a good receiver. I don't know what's happening with him. You know, he gets traded around a lot. So yeah, he has yeah. trouble staying healthy. It's one thing he's always kind of, you know, he'll get a big, big, big play, big play downfield, and he kind of lands on the wrong shoulder in a weird way. Seems like he does that consistently. They also I have Jalen Tolbert. Um, he's the young talent to see if he grows. So yeah. All right, Brandon. I started last on. Uh, you got any? pluses that you were thinking about uh in terms of look running back or any other players you got on your mind that you're you know stardom's looking good matchup wise um yeah i just hold on let's see. <clears throat> it was actually when you i thought we were going to running backs first so that's the first place i went gotcha oh yeah <laughs> our bears guys i like the andrew swift against the titans a lot in this game guys i think uh Probably rely pretty heavily on him in pass and run. Like you just said, David, check down to safe play for a young quarterback. It's going to be a go-to play for the Bears, at least early in the season. I see DeAndre Swift possibly rushing and receiving a touchdown. The only way I don't see that happen is if Khalil Herbert's the running back to rush. 
I'm with you. Um, I've been on the I've been on the uh, DeAndre Swift bandwagon a pretty long time at this point this offseason. I feel like he's a 15 touch just out of the backfield guy minimum per game. I think you don't pay a guy that much and not give him at least 15 carries a game. I don't think he's going to be like the bell cow back in terms of like 22 to 23, but nobody is in this league anymore. So I think he is going to be that 14 to 15 carry guy. And then I see at least six catches Um, just off of that statistics. You're probably going to see one touchdown out of all that. So if you're getting 22 touches a game out of your running back two and a touchdown, man, like I'm almost, you know, just tempted for pride's sake, just put him in at like running back, running back one. Yeah. Especially against defenses that, don't impress same um my if i can start mine my uh auto start um this is going to be a little bit like i'm trying to go a little deeper here because i think some of them are i'm trying to be with guys that you're debating on the fence right so uh alvin kamara alvin kamara with this new orleans saints defense or i'm sorry with this new orleans saints offense um the only consistent point of it at this point is alvin kamara Um, He was banged up last year. I think he's healthier this year. I don't see a lot of tread on his tires left, generally speaking, over his career, but we're not really worried about that. We're worried about week one. Um, He's facing the Carolina Panthers. Um, I don't really know. Who traded their best defensive player. Yeah, who you're scared of. I mean, uh, the Saints have never been an up-the-middle, ground-and-pound type of of team anyway. So if the only guy you're scared of is Derek Brown up the middle, or even him like sliding out to the outside, guess what the saints are going to do. They're going to run the opposite way. They're going to do outside zones. They're going to do some play action stuff where they get them involved in screens, play action. Um, Yeah. I just think that Alvin Kamara is kind of in the same light of what we just talked about with Deandre Swift. He's going to be 15 to 20 carries. He's going to have six to seven catches, get him involved early and often. You're probably going to see at least one touchdown. I don't even know. I think the Saints are really bad, and I don't even know if they're going to win this game. Um, but I could easily see them being down early or up early, and both ways it actually helps Kamara because you, if you need to catch up, you're going to give him the ball in terms of like screen game, get him involved. With, he's your best offensive player, him or Chris Olave. And then if you're up early, they're just going to pound the rock and just beat the shit out of Carolina. And if they're just that much better than them, they're just going to pound the rock and just run the clock and just go out with a win against Carolina. Yeah, I do like – I like Kamara this year entirely for sure. I don't like Kamara all year. That's why I wouldn't have drafted him super early. I don't see him lasting this season. I think he's getting older and stuff like that. But week one against this team, I think he's like one of my favorite three starts. Yeah, I drafted him in like every league um, because he was going in like the third or fourth round and he might perform like a number one. And uh, a lot of my leagues are half point PPR, which it's still worth it to draft him or PPR, which it's totally worth it to draft him because he catches a lot out of the backfield. Also, Kendra Miller, his backup is injured. He's having the season injured. So even more to your point, David, week one, definite stardom. Yep. Richie, any uh, any comments? Well, thanks for the comments on those two, but anything you got to toss in there? Any Random stardoms. I think Aaron Jones is a consummate professional from his time being in our division, and he's against the Giants, and they're still the Giants. Um, he's Minnesota's starter. Um, I, I can see him getting, you know, just at least five catches and forty yards just off of that, just off of catches. Um, mm-hmm. And however much they run the ball with him, it'll be interesting. But he's still firmly entrenched as their starter, so um, I think it's uh, the last. Like Aaron Jones season, he's getting older, you know, um, but I think I think he's due for a good game here, at least. I'm with you there. And then kind of the same instability that we're talking about from both of our picks is that instability at quarterback. I don't think you want Sam Darnold um, throwing any more than 25 times that game. If, if he's throwing more than 25 times this game, it's probably because you're in trouble <laughs> and you're you're losing to the Giants at that point, for God's sake. So, yeah, Aaron Jones, you start him until he gets hurt. I agree with you there just because really the situation more than anything, the Vikings are just a dumpster fire. I don't know who their backup quarterback is at this point from after JJ McCarthy. Um, I don't know where I heard this misinformation. I thought Jordan Addison was out for the year with like a a meniscus or something at some point, but it looked like uh, it. Okay. It looked really dire. He had an ankle injury in practice. Got it. Okay. So that's, that's what that is. Um, Richie, if you want to, if you got any avoidums this week or even maybe, 
avoid them is a strong word because I have a few in my mind that are kind of like honorable mention avoid them, but you can't not start them, but just maybe more of like a be careful or, you know, if you have a better, better second or third choice, you might want to do it. You have any ideas? Mm, man, I can never say to not sit Josh Jacobs, but he's against Philly's defense, you know. Um, I don't know how he's going to look on the Packers and, um, it's Philly's defense. You know, I just, they, they've stuffed everyone up the middle, like all last season, you know? Um, so I'm wary about Josh Jacobs. I would say expect like run RB three production from Josh Jacobs or RB two production from Josh Jacobs, not like RB one. If you're leaning on him to be your RB one. That's, I think that's a good call mainly just cause it's Jordan Davis and another year of Jalen Carter getting healthier and, better acclimated in terms of stamina towards the Eagles. And like you said, it's the road game. We don't know what the hell we're going to see. And we just talked about how that game's probably going to be a rock fight in general. Um, I don't really know who their pass rush is this year. If you guys know off the top of your head for Philly, but you know, after losing like Hassan Reddick, who's their best. Um, well, I think that's going to be probably an impact player this year. Yeah. So that's, it's that's with them. Um, I got one that I'm not going to say because you have to start him because of how much I like him. Um, I'll be right back, guys. Yeah, but I think be wary and don't be shocked if maybe B. John Robinson doesn't do super, super well against Pittsburgh. Um, I obviously would start him. I wish I, I do have him in one league. I wish I had him in every league. I love B. John Robinson this year. I would just say don't be shocked if he doesn't have a crazy game against Pittsburgh. They match up really well. Like Patrick Queen's a good coverage linebacker when he goes into route running mode. Um, their defensive line, Cam Cam Hayward, is still like super solid, and they're going to have good run defense, and it's a Pittsburgh Mike Tomlin coach team. They're going to do well against the run in general, but just don't be shocked. My actual avoid him or even like careful, I've never been super high on him this year anyway, um, Kyron Williams against Detroit. Hmm. Um, Kyron Williams is being drafted like RB1 this year. In most leagues, I would have said he's at best RB2. I think this Rams team is just in general a glass cannon paper tiger. Um, they're one injury away from really the whole thing falling apart and they're missing their left tackle to start the season. So Kyron Williams against Detroit with what you have on that defensive line with, uh, sorry, I'm going to get Brandon back in here uh, with, I think Aiden Hutchinson, I think this is probably going to be his like bust through year. Um, their defensive line is kind of deep and stacked. And I think, like I said, the same reasons that Detroit's probably going to have a really good offensive pickup. Um, the secondary was Detroit's biggest weakness last year. It was never run defense. It was never coverage. They're deep at linebacker, they're deep at defensive line. And I don't think LA, if they are going to do well against Detroit, it's not going to be on the ground. It's going to be through the air. And Matt Stafford, week one, Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua, and I just don't see Kyron Williams being the reason that that team does well against Detroit. Kyron Williams, I would not be surprised if his like 13 carries for 50 yards all game and maybe like two catches. I wouldn't be shocked by that stat line at all. And he's going to be most people's RB one. Um, just heads up on Kyron Williams. I don't, I don't really get it. I got a question for you. How much yeah. of this is you being high on Detroit's defense? Not as much as just, I just don't think that the Rams are as formidable. It, it's weird because I know it's like one of those things with Sean McVay that he's just, they're just always going to be, well coached and do well i just think it's it's a beginning of the season thing um la's best case scenario right now is just cooper cup and puka nakua carrying the weight and matthew stafford staying healthy i don't really see i understand how kyron williams was the load share kind of guy as of last year um young legs all that stuff but i never really I, I don't know. I just, I think it's a good matchup as well. I do think Detroit's defense is good and it's, it's for the reasons that it would stop Kyron Williams and what they'd be keyed into to try to, in terms of game planning, right? Like if you're Detroit, your game plan is stop the run early, force Matthew Stafford to throw it on late downs, beat the crap out of him because he's older and then use your fancy new cornerbacks and your fancy new toys in the secondary to kind of just like stop on third down. It's just kind of the the model Detroit's been doing for two years, and that's why they match up with teams that you would think traditionally they don't match up really well with. They beat Kansas City last year. Maybe it was a fluke. Maybe it wasn't. Um, they matched up really well against San Fran, but 
they just lost it in the last second. And it's like a team with two good receivers that do a lot of these tricky things. It's, it's the things that you would expect Detroit not to give up. Well, they do. Um, so I just don't think Kyron Williams is going to have a good game against Detroit personally. I like Kyron Williams a lot this year. I like him as a running back too. Um, but yeah, this game's going to probably be a, a rough, a rough road. I think, uh, Shine DJ Reader made the Lions a much better team against the run, for sure. Um, the running back that I would avoid, and I know I just told – I forget who that was who posted his lineup. I know I said that I I love the player over the course of the season. I would probably, if you got better options, put Rashad White on the bench this week. The first thing that Dan Quinn does when he becomes a head coach in a football team is – solidifies his run defense. So I liked the higher Washington made with Dan Quinn. I think the defense is going to perform better than the offense, even though I do like Jaden Daniels. So Rashad White, Buccaneers against uh, Commanders, that's the guy I don't love this week. But I, like I said, I do like the player overall. I like that matchup as well. I'm, I'm not – I don't really have much to comment on that one just because, yeah, like you said, if – that matchup goes well, then you know Rashad White might not be the most involved in that game. So, yeah, I think, I'm and I, yeah, I also I do think that they're going to exploit the, if the Bucks are. I do think the Bucks' offense is quality, man. I think they're going to exploit the same defense we watched Justin Fields torch last year. Mm -hmm. that's, that's where the Buccaneers beat the Commanders is in the passing game. I like it, um, Richie. Do you want to start us off with any likes on receiver this for this week? I don't know Likes if we started the last one, but yeah, if you got any off the top of your head or if you need to do a little bit of research real quick, but I'm I'm ready to go. And Brandon, if you're ready, you feel free to jump in as well if you have it. I had to sit him for receiver ready, but for likes at receiver, uh, I don't have anyone right now. Gotcha. I'm going to rock. Brandon, I think you know exactly who I'm about to say. We've been, oh, we've already, you know exactly. Um, DK Metcalf is playing Denver. Um and generally speaking, yeah, you're going to be matched up against Patrick Sertan. But um, unless unless Denver is doing something where they're going to have Patrick Sertan following DK Metcalf, which I find to be hard to believe just because of hard how Seattle's hard to, <laughs> hard to do, hard to believe because the physicality matchup, I know Patrick Sertan's like top two corners in the league. Um, but with the way that Seattle offense is structured, um, more so based on last year, so I can't speak to their new offensive coordinator. But so much motion, so much movement. Um, unless you're shadowing Patrick Sertan over DK Metcalf all game, you're going to leave openings and you're going to have to put Patrick Sertan into a situation where uh, potentially like he's going to be leaving somebody open just by following DK Metcalf. The other negative to that is I don't think it's a good game plan to try to shut down. If you're Denver and you're already thin everywhere else, I don't think it's a good game plan to lock down DK Metcalf and let what uh, Tyler Lockett and uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba just go absolutely insane. I don't think that's the right game plan. Put put Patrick Sertan somewhere where he can be productive and helpful, play zone, play smart, have him like be rangy this year because you just lost like all your rangy defenders. Justin Simmons is not on the team anymore. Um, I mean, I guess that's the only free safety that I can think of in terms of helping him out and over the top and stuff like that. Um, I guess my only caveat is to that is if you turn on the game and they say, well, we talked to the coach, we talked to Sean Payton, Patrick Sertan's just shadowing DK all game. I apologize, but overall DK should be starting on your team every week anyway. Um, but yeah, I think DK Metcalf over Denver is going to be probably eight catches, hundred yards. Yeah. I like, I like DK. I like DK all year, man. I do. I, I think Tyler Lockett, is really close to the bottom of being an impactful player in football more so than in fantasy. I, he's lost some speed. He used to be able to play a little bit outside. Now he's strictly slot. Smith Najibba is going to play the outside there. I think DK is going to get a lot of targets this year for sure. So I agree with you there, David. The guy that I like probably the most this week, honestly, and he's not going to be anyone's wide receiver one, or at least I hope not, is Jalen Waddell. Yeah, they're playing the Jacksonville Jaguars. We think of a – I don't love their secondary. They didn't really improve. They actually lost in player in Jenkins that I liked a lot. Um, and I think 
Their, their edge rush is good enough to get to Tua. I don't love the Dolphins' offensive line, but it's going to take time. Josh Allen can get there. I don't see Tyree Kill having the time to develop, you know, the downfield plays. And I think Jalen Waddle, Tua, when he's in trouble, he starts to get rid of the ball quickly. That's the one thing he does do really well um, in the NFL is he, he gets – he makes his reads quick and he gets rid of the ball quickly. And, you know, Mike McDonald draws, draws up an offense where Tua doesn't have to hold the ball too long. I like Jalen Waddle getting between, honestly, eight to 11 catches in this game, high usage in this game. I love that, mainly because Tyreek's still nursing an injury as well. So if he's not at full speed and breaking the defense open off the top, like you said, I think – I think Tua tends to look to Jalen more as a safety blanket than, a, than yeah, to Tyreek. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I'm with you there. Um, kind of avoid him. And as this is going to be a lot of factors here, so don't hate me. Um, I don't know how comfortable I, I have. Oh, I think we cut out for a second. I didn't yep. hear your player. Oh, sorry. I hope I'm still functionally. I think anytime one of us leaves the room or re-enters, last time Richie entered, I think I had a little bit of connection issue. So I'm going to give it a second to kind of catch up. Um, You're sounding good right now. Okay, cool. Um, I would be careful with DJ Moore this week. Um, going to be matched up on Legereus Sneed. And then um, I was looking through the Tennessee Titans depth chart today. I forget off the top of my head who their second uh, cornerback it is. Is but it's also no slouch. Um, I want, I forgot. Uh, fun fact, Earl Thomas, backup safety on the Tennessee Titans. I don't know if you guys knew that. Wow. That's where we're at with Earl Thomas's point of his career. I was looking through their depth chart. Um, unfortunate for him, but careful with just DJ Moore. Um, yes, Keenan Allen is still a little bit soft on the foot injury, but with a few things, a few factors. Rookies, rookie first overall picks are... O, 12, Chidabe Awuzie. Thank you, Paulie. Um, Chidabe Awuzie is not terrible. He was the first corner, I believe, on Cincinnati last year. He went to Tennessee to be the first corner over there before they ended up trading for Legereus Sneed. So now he ended up slotting into that second corner spot. So either side that, you know, DJ Moore is going to match up on. He torches really, really good corners regardless. It's not really like a thing that DJ Moore ever gets overwhelmed by a, a, a top 10 corner or anything like that. But with the fact that oh, first overall pick quarterbacks are like 0 12 or 0 and 12 in their first games as a player. Um, I think with Tennessee having a slightly underrated defense, um, the fact that Caleb, we don't know what he looks like yet and who he's going to look to. Is he more of a tight end as a safety blanket guy, slot receiver as a safety blanket guy? Is he going to be a check down Charlie early on? Um, it's the first game of the season. We don't really know what to expect. I expect more like running the ball than anything. I don't expect a lot of deep balls or anything like that, unless they just are going to take us by surprise. And I think that'd be a pleasant surprise. Um, but at this point, I would say like with Keenan and Rome, like I think any one of them are equal in terms of feeling to start them. If I was starting Rome this week, I'd feel just as confident of him having like six catches for 75 yards and a touchdown as I would DJ having six catches, 75 yards and a touchdown. So just be wary that if you have like, if he's your wide receiver three or he's your solid wide receiver two, but you got like a wide receiver three backup and you might want to just start two receivers that week. I don't know if DJ is like your, your guaranteed locked in starter this week. I don't know. Yeah. And I'm going to jump to the other side and I know a lot of people probably drafted DeAndre Hopkins. He's going to miss some games. It looks like I would not, I know you're thinking number one opportunity targets. Do not start Calvin Ridley on your fantasy team this week. Um, I, I do think the Bears struggle in pass rush this year, but I think that secondary is locked down. Whether or not you're playing Jalen Johnson or Tyreek Stevenson, Calvin Ridley caught 76 of 138 passes yes last year. 76 of 138 targets. It's like a 55% catch rate. He doesn't really catch the ball all that well. People see him, rank him high. People love him. I don't get it. He's getting overpaid everywhere he goes. Do not play him against Jalen Johnson. That's who he's probably going to be facing. So, 
any of the Bears cornerbacks, I think they can lock them up. So, yeah, yeah man, it's nice uh, thinking about how there's going to be Bears football in less than a week. It's amazing, you know. Um, but for my sit um, I was going to say Rasheed Rice. When you look at the Chiefs' uh, wide receiver core, they're really leaning on Rasheed Rice to be like a number one receiver, to perform better than he did last year. And um, he's against Baltimore this week. And also Marquise Brown, his help, he hasn't practiced this week, and they're playing on Thursday, I believe, right? So, um, Rasheed Rice, uh, I don't see him, uh, doing much against Baltimore this week. Unfortunately, uh, I think it's going to be tough sledding for him and, uh, Kansas city is going to have to pull something out with their tight ends or, uh, their wide receiver depth. Yeah. I think Patrick Mahomes has turned into that, that quarterback where, uh, you know, I, I feel like I can picture the graphic watching a game with Patrick Mahomes and, Patrick Mahomes has completed 11 completions to 11 different receivers, first 11 throws, and you wouldn't be surprised. So there's no really point in investing in any one player week one, or especially if there's no like you know, guaranteed lockdown starter on that team. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Spread the ball yeah. well. I do like their improvements on the receiving core. I think Rice, Rice takes a step forward from last year. I think Hollywood Brown, when he's healthy, is a quality player, a number between the number two and the number three twinge, and then I – I really like Xavier Worthy once he gets his, you know, he's got his feet underneath him. Once he gets the, the playbook down, once he gets his head wrapped around the speed of the NFL, which won't take him long. Plus, Kelsey's going to be helping them all out, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, that's the guy you got um, worried about, who always seems to be left wide open. <laughs> no disrespect to Kelsey. <laughs> um, I kind of miss my stardom. I have someone. Uh, yeah, Mike sure. Evans. Yeah. That was my number two. Great call. <clears throat> yeah, because – um, so he's going against Washington. I know you said Washington, uh, Dan Quinn's going to fix their run defense, but I don't see a cornerback on the roster that can reliably cover Mike Evans. And I no, think he's going to feast on him. Rough. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Mike Evans season this week, at least. So, yeah. I'm with you as well, just because I think in terms of ball control and stuff, I could easily see Washington just turning the ball over a lot, having a lot of three and outs, giving Tampa a lot of reliable drives to just get the ball to Mike Evans. Cause I, we don't know what Jaden Daniels is yet, or frankly, Austin Eckler, what he can still do. And yeah, I wouldn't be as surprised by it. I'm a lot. Like field a lot. Yeah. It's, it's just one of those things of touches like time of possession. I could see, you know, Tampa Bay having like 40 to 20 just cause it's Washington. They have no idea what the hell they're doing yet. It's a cliff Kingsbury air raid offense. It's the, the whole point of the offense is either we get a great, amazing, huge play downfield, or we just walk off the field with the defense play. And so, you know, that's literally like intentional um, based on how he, he runs his offense. So I am with you there as well. Ball control, like 38 minutes to 22 minutes of ball control wouldn't shock me. And you know, the more time your team has the ball, the better fantasy results you have. So. Yep. Um, we could do some tight end stuff. I mean, tight ends are just such a crapshoot at this point that I don't really know. I mean, if you guys have anything to say about any tight end, positive or negative, go for it. I might have one comment, but um, for me, it's just I have them, so I want to start them. Uh, Evan Ingram against Miami. Um, was, was it? Yeah, Evan Ingram against Miami. <laughs> the linebacker core against uh, Miami is – not that deep, not that strong. Um, Evan Ingram is a matchup nightmare, period, in total anyway. Um, Miami, you know, the secondary is pretty okay when Jalen Ramsey's healthy. Otherwise, the depth isn't really there. And when you're down to your fourth corner matching up with Evan Ingram or your, you know, first or second linebacker matching up with Evan Ingram, um, you're going to have a bad time. And so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just – I think uh, Evan Ingram's a target machine this year in general. Uh, you're going to be in the heat. Two Florida teams, you know, just check downs to the to the tight end and hope for the best. That's that's my guy. Brandon, yeah, sounds I, like you had Evan Ingram too. Anything uh, backup wise or Richie? Yeah, I think I was going to say Ingram, but a, a guy that I like this week too because Rich already mentioned just a monster defense that's going to get after the quarterback and they play well in the secondary as well. I like Ferguson on Dallas. I think he's going to be a safety blanket for Dak this week. You know, Dak's going to pass in the flat a whole lot. I don't love their check down options at all. I don't like Zeke or Rick, Rico Dowdle being like a big impact player in the passing game for Dallas this year. So I think their safety net is Ferguson. That's where I think he'll go early and often. That was going to be mine as well. I had that as like my first, you know, just kind of like deep cut. Um, 
Richie, before I give my third deep cut, you got anything you want to add there with tight ends? Well, um, I was looking around, and I didn't know Cole Komet is not expected to play this Thursday. That sucks. I did not know that. Yeah, exactly. So if you have Cole Komet, um, hope you drafted another tight end as a backup. So, um, Do we know why? Is that that's news or is that breaking let, news? Let me find that here. Yeah, that's, that's news to me, man. I'm, I'm get, usually get people texting me all day when something happens. Yeah, and that would suck because I've been uh, I've been big on the get Cole Komet the damn ball and keep his, it away from his, Gerald Everett. His, his profile has a healthy tag in both leagues that I'm in. Hmm. I don't know why it says here that it says he's not expected to play Thursday. Let me look into that a little bit more. But for my stardom, I was going to say Kyle Pitts just because it's about freaking time. I think he's ready to freaking – I think he's been – just looking at the face of frustration the last couple of years, I think he wants to blow the season open, and I think he's ready to go. And they've been experimenting <laughs> with him in different formations. Um, were you looking at somebody play? I'm sorry to interrupt you, Rich. You said Thursday. Were you looking at somebody who was playing Thursday, or were you reading the name Cole Komet? Because that's what I was going to make a joke about. I was like, well, of course he's not expected to play Thursday. The Bears play on Sunday. <laughs> okay. thinking, yeah, that... thinking the Bears had two Thursday night preseason games. Was it a report from a preseason <clears throat> game? Uh, that could have been it. They, they, yeah, they that, might, that must be what Thursday. that's from. Hall of Fame okay. was okay, the Chiefs game. Yeah. Okay. That's my bad. Okay. Oh, you're it good. looks like you just freaked yeah. me out more in real life than anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I had one more honorable mention just because um, Arizona, I don't think their defense has really shaped up yet. Uh, I think Dalton Kincaid is probably a really good week one tight end starter. Uh, in general, I think Brandon and I talked about it. Don Dalton Kincaid is going to be used a lot like Evan Ingram or Travis Kelsey this year as like just this big slot receiver kind of offline. I don't think, and if uh, who's their really uh, Dawson Knox? Is that their really reliable yeah. tight end for the last few years? I think they put Dawson Knox in much more passing situ or uh, blocking situations and run blocking situations. So when Dalton Kincaid or Dawson Knox is in there, I think you're gonna use Dalton Kincaid like that big flex wide receiver. Um, Josh Allen doesn't have any trustworthy targets as of yet, you know. So like if Khalil Shakir or Keon Coleman have a big game, great. And that's going to be kind of like a random, you know, surprise, you know, uh, uh, pop up for you. But I think the most reliable player, period, fantasy wise in the Buffalo team is going to be Dalton Kincaid, that or James Cook. Um, but as a receiver, I think Dalton Kincaid's your best just pass catcher on that team as of right now, week one, week two. So if you get to start basically a flex, quick, big tight end as a slot wide receiver for three weeks, and Dalton Kincaid, and that's like your tight end. I think you're basically starting a third receiver at tight end for the first two weeks with Dalton Kincaid on and Buffalo. So that's like my secret. It's it, I don't think anybody's not starting Dalton Kincaid, but uh, if you did, I think I'd feel really good about it. I, I agree with you, David. I think Kincaid has a. I mean, this is this sound crazy, guys, but I'm going to stick to it. I've said it a few times in the last couple of months. I think Kincaid as a possibility of finishing as the best pass catcher over this season on that team. I do. You saw Evan Ingram led the Jaguars last year in receptions. He had 114. He was a top five player. I think Kincaid's playing that same role. He's the reliable piece. He's already the veteran after being yeah. there for a year. So I, I think he might finish with the most yards receiving on that team. I think if you're running like a bunch set, and you got Khalil Shakir, Keon Coleman, and Dalton Kincaid. I think Kincaid's probably your interior man. Other two flare out, start blocking. Kincaid gets that ball. I think that's yeah, like your was, your extended handoff type of situation. Your your easy yards. I think you're going to Kincaid. He was good last year. I mean, he showed that he he's was going to be a good player. Agreed. And he's a little bit like he he's bigger, but he he seems quick. So, um, yeah, Kincaid. I don't think anybody's. If anybody was debating on starting a different tight end over Dalton Kincaid, I don't think you have any issues there. So, I agree with you. All right, boys, any last comments? We'll do kickers and log out of here. Yeah, well, just real quick for a sleeper, guys. I know I'm know i totally probably... fucking with you guys. We're not doing kickers, by the way. I, 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 I... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that. geez, kickers, I was, okay. I was going to just sit out of that. No, um, again, it's probably <laughs> rostered in every week, should be. And you're probably going to wonder, when do I start him? This is my sleeper pick, the guy that he's 100% he's owned in fantasy, but I'm sure there's a lot of skepticism around whether or not you should use him right away. 
Malik Neighbors is playing the 32nd ranked pass defense from last year. They were quietly the worst pass defense in the NFL. I like Malik Neighbors to get the ball in every way they can. There's no more Saquon Barkley there, who was like 46% of their offense. They're gonna, they finally got themselves a guy who can give the ball and he will make a play with it himself. I like Malik Neighbors touching the ball an awful lot this week, and I like him getting in the end zone. I like that. I worry just because it's the Giants and generally speaking. Yeah, but, yeah, I th- I agree with you. I think he has to be started just because of the touches and everything like that. I mean, even if it's like screens, you know, you catch a one-yard yeah, screen gonna, for six yards, that's, that's a good ball. point. Dable's going to find a way to get him the ball. Man. And I don't think – I think the shorter range, quick passes, slants, screens, I think the better, and Dable knows that. Um, he's, leave he's, the decision making out of Daniel Jones's mind. He's probably the most athletic player in this year's draft. Neighbors, if you give him a screen and you block in front of him, he'll take care of it. I feel I feel so bad for that guy. <laughs> yeah, he's I mean, he was making millions of dollars playing football. I mean, whatever. But like in terms of the football situation, I feel so bad. He's just so screwed. He's gonna want the ball. That's for sure. Who's the backup in New York this year? The quarterback. I think it's- Still, uh, the Italian guy, Tommy Cutlets, yeah, Tommy who is, DeVito, who was Tommy Chase, DeVito. who was Chase Brown's quarterback at Illinois. Oh, is he now? Interesting. I feel, I feel, uh, I was gonna say it, but like, this is a random aside. If you guys got one minute to hear it, hear it out, I, I think the Jets are just gonna be so solid this year because even oh, if Aaron Rodgers goes down, you got Tyrod Taylor. Drew I'm Lock. sorry, Drew Lock. Oh, Lock. shit. Jesus. <clears throat> oh, no. That might be worse. <laughs> I, um, I think I'd rather go with DeVito in that case, man. Yeah, no kidding. Huh. Sorry to cut you um, off. No, no. I just uh, – a random, like, thought process was just, man, the Jets, even if Aaron Rodgers goes down for, like, four weeks, I, I was like, Tyrod Taylor is just fine. Well, Garrett Wilson like, is just a monster. And so – that was going to be one of my mentions, but I he's I think he's playing a, a solid Niners. Yeah, you just can't you just can't start Garrett Wilson if you can avoid it. I mean, it's the Niners, but um, thanks, Polly. Ed Buckley, Shakir will not be a surprise to me if he goes off. That's why I stole him late. Yeah, Shakir was going really late in my draft as well, and I really missed out on him. Um, in terms of yards per play and. I believe it's in overall efficiency. He was more efficient towards the end of the year than Stefan Diggs was. Um, so yeah, I'm with you on the Khalil Shakir bandwagon. I think it's just a young leg and Josh Allen, for some reason, for a guy who throws really hard and really far loves throwing to small dudes. Just kind of doesn't really make sense. It's like the smaller, the target, the better he hits it. Um, I can't imagine. I'd love to see a Mike Evans body type with Josh Allen, just to see what the hell that looks like. <laughs> Um, yeah, but we haven't seen guy. it yet. Yeah, I'm Ke- sorry. Keon Coleman's a big boy. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Keon Coleman's like 6'4", 6'3", 220. Um, so let's hope. You know, I actually looked this up. He's the exact size, same size as Roma Dunze. Is wow. he really? Yeah. Height, weight. What about arm length? Um, millim- two millimeters shorter. Nice two try. millimeters. They measured it down to two millimeters. Holy No, shit. I don't He's fucking okay. know. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But you believe it. Um, Keon Coleman throwing the balls with all the quarterbacks in the draft. I did. A uh, guy throws like a 65 yard ball in the air, man. Yeah, no, that was good. Um, that was a good clip. I mean, Keon Coleman's just internet gold at this point. Protect him at all costs. Um, yeah, Rogers going down week one. You know, at this point, I don't even I don't even hate Rod Rogers sucks. I don't even care. Like if he if he does well, that's fine. If not. I want Jordan Love going down week one, but um, yeah. Uh, yep. Sounds good to me, boys. Um, I think at this point, it's crazy how much we had to talk about. I didn't expect this show to go that long. I expected much more of a 30 minute, 45 minute uh, show today, just mostly because of lack of things that we can say uh, in terms of matchups, because who the hell knows what these teams are going to actually look like when week one rolls around. I think we'll be a little bit more accurate and uh, I don't know, concrete with our opinions as the weeks go by. But um, 
yeah, anybody who tuned in yet again, thank you so much. I never really expect anyone to care what I say or, you know, anything about football. So any opinions that are, I appreciate that Brandon. You can patronize me whenever you want. Um, But yeah, no, I appreciate anybody who's willing to listen. Uh, Thank you so much. We will definitely see you next week and uh, tune in bear skis. Uh, Anybody who watches bear ski will have another, hopefully one more show before the season, some Tennessee Titans preview and, kind of break down that prediction. So um, we'll see you guys later, sooner. And real, uh, yeah. Real, real quick, David. Guys, yeah, you can Brandon. find me at Chicago Sports Podcast Monday night at 9 o'clock. You can also find me on the Four Star Chicago Sports Monday night at 6 o'clock. And then moving forward every Tuesday here to break down some fantasy with David. Yep. Awesome. Thank you, Brandon. Please, if you're not already, uh, please follow Brandon. Um, he, we found him, you know, kind of randomly, and he's been awesome with us and very, very good and workable. So, Please, please support Brandon anywhere that he is uh, talking. So thank you guys again for, you know, coming in on a Tuesday. Um, See you guys next week and we'll be in touch. All right. Take care.